you know, want to work. And they realize like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm low on workload. What do you have? I'm like, well, there's not much, but you know, maybe we could, you know, do some online learning and do some continuing ed or whatever, but you know, I, you know, learn more about my employees that, you know, that they aren't slackers. They really do want to work. It's just a matter of make sure that they have the tools that they need to work. That was probably the biggest learning this week. Cool. Jay, what about you? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I kind of echo that. I think our team is real appreciative that we still do have work to do. Um, and I think that it means something to them. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I guess from a learning standpoint, it's, it's that when times, I guess what I realize is when times are hardest is when you really have to be the most aggressive. Uh, Bill and I talk about this ambush mentality all the time. And that's kind of where I'm at. Like I, I want to be aggressive during this time and think about what can I get out of this bad, bad situation which is why I'm hiring a sales guy because I'm like, there's probably some really quality folks that are laid off right now looking for work. So I'm glad I'm able to do that. And just It's tough sometimes, but but anyway, that's that's my learning is just to keep that ambush mentality, especially when times are hardest, because you may be surprised at what pops up. Cool. Thanks. What about you, Catherine? What have you learned? I like that term. Ambush mentality. I absolutely That's like that. By the Marine um, Marines, yeah. What? Yeah. The, uh, name, yeah, the, the name of this company is Simplify Remodeling. So it comes from, the, yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah, I learned that up in your neck of the woods in the Quantico area. So, uh, of course. Um, yeah, Quantico is where we get stuck on the highway trying to get to my in-laws in Maryland. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, what have I learned? You know, I do think that, uh, I probably what I've learned is that, um, the, my employees are doing really, really well under the working conditions that we have. I do think it's starting to get hard. I mean, I joked earlier and said my family's, my kids are imploding and, you know, while my, my team is not, um, but I definitely have tried really hard to check in with them every day and I can see kind of some swings that are, you know, like this. I guess you want your, your employees to be more on a, like a heart monitor chart as opposed to a, like, flat line. But I can sort of <laughs> see those are getting bigger. Like people are you know, people are kind of like a mess one day and then the next day they're like, okay, thanks for letting me fall apart. I'm better today. And I think sometimes you just got to let people do that. It's almost like dealing with children. Like, yes, we're here. We're going to get through this together. It's okay to fall apart every once in a while. And then we'll all pick ourselves back up and we'll keep moving forward. Um, so that's probably my big learning for today. And trying not to kill somebody while they're like having that dip and that low. Cool. Yeah, it's good learnings. It's good learnings. Yeah, I think the, I think the message can't be ambushed, but the, but the mentality can be. So it's uh, pretty cool. It's a pretty cool, uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Looking for the opportunities, looking for where we can, where we can, where we can take it. All right. So here's the, the some of the meat of it. What do you need? Uh, we need some input on, some help with, some anything like that. Brian, what do you need some input on? Uh, the one I've been struggling with is, you know, for some of our stuff, for we were we were thinking about doing a mailing. Well, we did one mailing, just a newsletter. But one thing was that we ran into was, you know, a lot of our professionals are working from home, and so all we really have are work addresses. And so, how often are people I mean, like Catherine and Bill, and Jay, I mean, I guess, Jay, you're probably in the office, but how often are people getting mail from their office if you don't go in all the time? A couple times so a how, how often are people getting mail sent to their office? Well, no, like, it, like me, I haven't been to my office in two weeks. And so, you know, I'll have a big stack of mail there, but sometimes, you know, it's all almost overwhelming. So I really sorted out pretty quick of, you know, what's bills, what needs to be, what needs attention and what's just junk mail. So, 
you know, right. we were, we, you know, trying to figure out of how we do a mailing. We were thinking about maybe even waiting a little bit longer until, you know, maybe July or whatever to try to get, let people settle in. And then usually, cause we have one scheduled for June, but you know, with everyone going back to work in June, we're like, it's going to be stacked up. So we're better off waiting until a later part of June or early July to do a mailing. But it, it just kind of asking around of, you know, I guess, Bill, you're working from home. So they're like, but you know, trying to figure out. Uh, I, go to the, no, I have, a, I get my mail at a post office box that's 20 minutes from here. So I, okay. yeah, it's where I'm staying most of the time. So I get the mail once a week. Okay. I, I go down there and, and or unless there, and I got this app on my thing where I can see what's in the mail. So if there's money or something, I might go twice a week. <laughs> but, 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 but yeah, but there's, uh, but mostly about once a week, I run, I go get the mail. Okay. And so, um, I don't know, Catherine, you. you... So, so I have somebody in my office who's, who gets, you know, there's a, there's one person that goes in every day. She answers the phones. She gets the mail. She sorts the mail. Like my kind of personal mail goes into like a box in my office. But you are right. When I go in there and it might be two weeks worth of mail, I am very cutthroat as I yeah. kind of sort through it all because it's a lot. And I do just, I mean, I stand over the recycling trash can when I'm going through the mail. Yeah. So I think you <laughs> might be right about maybe waiting a little. So trying to think how else you can reach these people. Well, when we do email, I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty common. It just, you know, sometimes people get inundated with email. So, um, yeah, I yeah. think, yeah. yeah, I mean, part of the idea, I mean, part of the reason we went with postcards is because people were going to actually at least look at it. Yeah. They may toss it, but they're right. going to, they're going to look at it. I mean, there's some letters that never get opened. I mean, they just go in the, in the, in the bin, you know, right there. We have, yeah, we have a recycle bin in the post office. You know, yeah. where I get my mail. I mean, I just stand there and and, and go through it there. Yeah. Mean, there, yeah. There, there have been days when I had a stack of mail and walked out with nothing. So, <laughs> you know, and there, most days I think there's something that I'm taking home. I mean, it's not always. Um, so, the, um, yeah, I, I would, I, I guess my, my thought is it's, I would err on the side of aggressiveness. Okay. I'd probably think about June and July or may and I mean, are getting something out now that might be a postcard and then maybe something else. So that, that's, I don't, I don't which, think. I was just going to say, which then comes back to the, what's the message? Right. You know, you said earlier, story message offer. So then what's, what's the message? Can the message be something that really makes somebody go, Oh, wait, let me just, put this over here and I'll think about it. Kind yeah. Of right. Yep. Yeah. That's a good thought. Really good thought. Yeah. So that's yeah, a, my, uh, the headline. Go ahead, Bill. No, I'm done. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. I was going to say my, my thought is probably a little different just because one, most people around, at least here seem to, you know, be like you, Catherine, where somebody's in the office every day checking mail and things of that nature. But two, honestly, whether I get a big stack of mail or a small stack of mail, I'm spending the same amount of time looking at it. And if it doesn't resonate with me right out the gate, it's getting tossed, whether it's the only piece or one of 20. So I would almost say like, I wouldn't worry about people getting a big stack of mail. If your message resonates with them, irregardless, it's going to resonate. They need your service or they don't. Um, and if they don't, maybe it's just more top of mind awareness for when they do later on down there. So I, I personally wouldn't hold off on sending out a postal campaign based on the assumption that people are just going to throw away droves of mail. I, I just don't know that's the case. Okay. Do you have any? Well, and you. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to say, but you just got, you just did one and you've had good response. Correct. Yeah, I got a site survey on Tuesday from one that went out last week. That's right. They went to people's houses. Yeah. Okay. Went to that's correct. That's Good the point. market we're in. We don't do market. Not that market. So. Yeah, that's the difference that we're struggling with. Is, you know, we don't have home addresses yeah. for a lot of our architects and stuff. So. Yep. Right. But they also may have, these architects may be having trouble 
with the engineers they use now and are yeah. looking for somebody. I mean, you, there are a lot of people that are like, you know what, I'm just going to stay at home. I'm not doing anything because I'm scared. And maybe it's a uh, time to jump on that opportunity. Yeah. I'll, good tell, play. I'll tell you another thing, Brian. I mean, you, you, if there's 25 or 50 architects that you want to get, I guarantee you can find their home addresses. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, if it's not that many, mail it to their home. I mean, they might, I don't know, some of them might think it's too aggressive, but it could be a, hey, we're. Well, it depends on the, ma on the message, really. Like Catherine's saying, right? You know, if you, if you find user home address, I think it needs to be something about that it's not pushing work. It's trying to, you know, tell them, hey, you know, we're all in different times and we thought some tried something different. So. Yeah. Do you have a story? So, I mean, one of the things that, I mean, truthfully, one of the things I'm using is your story right now because you came on after the last uh, downturn. Yeah. And, you know, and so, um, you know, is there something like that that would say, hey, it's, you know, we, you, we need to get out of, you need to get out in front of this restart. And, you know, something along that message could work too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just a, just, just a thought. Um, because yeah, I mean, it's going to restart. I'm a little surprised that the architects aren't doing more, I guess, because I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean, I know they're working from home, but I mean, the, you know, business is still pretty, I mean, most people had a backlog of work, so, but they're not going to have it forever. I mean, they got to do. So, right. All right, cool. That's good stuff, y'all. Catherine, what do you got? What do you need help with? I was like, what are we answering? Yeah. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing, you know, the biggest thing right now is um, I'm, you know, I do less sales and I do more like what I call strategic alliances. And so, but it kind of works the same way as sales. I mean, you've got to have a pipeline and you've got to have people in them. And, and I'm, tr and I'm really trying to help my guys out there. Like, how do you sell insurance in this kind of market? Um, and so really what I'm kind of struggling with is, um, and Bill, I mean, we've talked, we talk about this every week, but, um, I'm trying to struggle or sort of struggling with anything that I can do to help them or give them to keep them, you know, they're getting a lot of no's. So that's my biggest kind of issue right now. They're getting no's for everything. I'm sorry. I said, what, what kind of insurance do you sell? Um, property and casualty and life insurance were about 50% commercial, 50% personal. Oh, geez. We have I'm some engineers, we have some resident um, So we're getting a lot of, we're getting a lot of calls from home and auto people who want us to re-quote their account. Because they're sitting at home thinking about like what their major bills are and how, where they can cut money. So we're getting a lot of that. Um, but as far as the, the commercial sales, we are, they're just, um, I don't know, I guess we're just trying to figure out how to approach people from a um, we know times are tough standpoint. Ideas? Um. Could you, I don't know, I get what you're saying, but to me it's like, yeah. now's the time to see what's working and what's not, because you're living it. So, you know, maybe it's just a, hey, let's evaluate where you're at and make sure it's working for you. I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, for me, you know, the only time I really look around is when it's time for renewal, I guess. I mean, you could always make the pitch that, you know, hey, you know, we're here to try to help, you know, I mean, you're helping save money, but then it just comes down to the lowest price, which, you know, maybe that's not where you want to be. I mean, everyone 
you know, comes on the service. I mean, I really think. Yeah, we try really hard not to sell on that. Yeah. I mean, it really comes down to service, right? You know, it comes down to being able to give someone a $50,000 check the day after their fire to help them get back right. on their feet. And that's really where it comes down from. And I think, you know, it goes back to the idea, like you don't necessarily have to say exactly who it was, but I think it would be good to, you know, if he had some sort of, I mean, more people are on Facebook than ever. And then trying some sort of Facebook campaign might, might work for you. I don't know if you tried it or not. So, yeah, thank you. Is it the no, we don't want to talk about it, or is it no, we're not buying, we, we've quoted it and we're not getting it? Which, which no, one? it's kind of the no, we don't want to talk about it. And that's on mostly commercial? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're, they're, because it's either that people are in survival mode. Right. Yeah, they're not. Going um, to yeah. I think it depends on, so, so the message is, so the message for the people in survival mode is, hey, we're here. If you need us, need us call us, right? I mean, they're not going to make a big decision about insurance right now. No, and so, you know, we've, we've talked about, um, and this is a little bit down in the weeds in insurance, and so I apologize, but we, we've talked about, um, offering ourselves as a resource more is trying to sell them insurance. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're not in an industry that's dependent on your work comp mod being 1.0 or less, because in order to get a bid, then, um, and, and in those cases, you just have to be a little bit careful. Um, you know, we can, there's some class codes that you can do for payroll, like um, they've set up a particular class code if you have paid workers who are not working, because let's be honest, there's no risk. They've set up a, there's a class code for like clerical who's telecommuting because there's less of a risk. You know, we can move some, you know, so we've kind of tried to say, okay, you know, there's some things that if you're really worried about the financial part of this coming up, there's some things you can do on your existing policy that might give you a little bit of a breather and a little bit of a break. Um, there's some instances where you have to be careful, um, but that you could do. And, um, you know, if you want some advice, we can certainly look at your policy and give you some suggestions. And then when you get to the point where you might want to look at for an agent who's helping you more than, you know, we'd like to be that person, um, which is just kind of giving away free advice, but you know, maybe have you that's tried that? Because I mean, that's to me, you know, like, you know, for workman's comp, ours is pretty, pretty minimal as engineers. But, you know, right, to me, I think right. that'd be great. That'd be a great email campaign if you did something like that where you sent it to people and had a, um, a just a little piece where you offer the free advice um, that could save them money, right? You know, that's a huge thing right. for right now. And, you know, that they, you know, that they could, that opens up the door when they, when you can kind of walk through them. And like I said, you have to make sure that you clearly identify the, the, cautionary pieces of that but it it shows that you're willing to, to help them and not just want money right and it's a good thing for somebody that you have that you at least know but it's i think for a cold call it's a little bit rough it's like hey i'm catherine nice to meet you let's go down in the weeds on your work comp audit <laughs> well but i don't i don't think it is i mean you know i i would think that you know for some people if, if they're really looking at trying to save money that that would be good information for them of, you know, if you had a workforce of, of, you know, 30 laborers that are out there, you know, think of like a landscaping company or something, and right now they aren't working at all. I mean, that'd be a huge savings for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. That Even helps. if it's only for a couple months. Um, so anyway. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question on the sales side. Um, I feel like we can start selling in some industries and then to some clients. Uh, it just depends on where they are with, with their, in their, in their, in their, in their mindset. So it was like Eric last week. I mean, he's like, I mean, I'm open to looking at it, you know, cause he, that's just kind of where he is. He said, I wouldn't ordinarily be looking at this thing, but I got some time on my hands. Right. Yeah. You know, and so I think it's in the, I think it's very individual. So I think we're going to probably have to go through more people 
So in other words, if we used to make 10 calls and three people would talk to us, probably going to have to make 20 or 30 to get the same three people to talk to us. But having said that, they're sitting at home with a phone right in front of them. It's a pretty good time to make those calls. You know? Yeah. And, you know, we do some breakdown on industry based on, um, you know, if, if we have five markets for an HVAC contractor and two markets for a plumber, then we're going to go after the HVAC. Like we, we kind of break some stuff down by certain industries, but it sounds like we probably, it would be worth our time to do some, to put some thought into maybe which industries are either being very affected and could really use some of this advice on cutting sales and figures and, you know, cutting payroll and that kind of stuff or which industries are really haven't taken a hit yet. Right. So yeah, when I come back, back yeah, when I come back, when you start thinking about marketing or sales, it always comes down to target offer copy. So what's the target? What's your offer? And then how are you going to present it? The copy It's just, it, so the target is more important and the offer is second. Yeah. And then what you actually say is important, but it's not as important as, hitting the right target. So I think you're on the right track there. Yeah. That's good. Jay, what would you like some input on or help with? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, like I said, we're trying to hire a salesperson. I kind of talked to Bill about this yesterday. Uh, we have never, I've never worked a commission job. I don't know how they're structured. Uh, never hired a salesperson. Uh, everybody we've always hired has been hourly or salaried. Um, but what, you know, Bill and I talked about kind of different structures of how commission has worked and how do you pay somebody and, you know, they start on day one and what are they doing until they make that first sale? Because our sales pipeline, you know, one, we're booked up really into July and August and two, it, it typically takes, you know, four to six weeks from like the first call to like signing the agreement. So it'd be tough to say, well, you're not getting paid and potentially until July when we actually start working, make money on this job. <laughs> You know, so, you know, what it, do either one of you have experience with commission based work and how does it, how does that, you know, what, what advice can you give me to, to help wrap my head around how to pitch that to a prospective salesperson? Do you, Brian, do you have commission based people? Nope. <laughs> okay. Doing those salespeople. So, I mean, you're looking at them, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, okay. I'm interested to hear okay. this as well. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, it goes back to that thing of like, you know, to me, it'd be the whole idea of just going purely commission is, is the uncertainty. But for some people, if you make it worthwhile, it, you know, that could be, they could wait, make way, way more money. And I guess it just depends on how, you know, how it's set up. So I'm all ears trying to listen. Um, so I can only speak to my industry clearly. Um, and, and the one place that we are a little bit different is that we have, um, residual incomes every year. So if you sell a commercial account one year, you know, when it renews, it, we make money on it again the second year. So, um, the way my salespeople, because of that, the way my salespeople are set up, they get a little bit higher commission when they sell it and then they get a lower commission on renewal because they still have to make sure that your equipment list is right and your vehicle list is right and your drivers are right. And if you're growing and if you're, you know, they still have to like work on that account. Um, there are people in my industry who, so, so we pay um, 30, we pay 40% of the revenues on new business and we pay 35% on renewal. Um, there are people in my industry that pay 75% up front and then that's it. Like there is no more. Um, and that keeps them, you know, turning rocks every day. Um, the one thing that I have learned is that if you're going to get anybody decent, you're probably going to have to pay them a little bit for the first year. Um, Bill may or may not agree with me on this. Um, mm -hmm. If you want somebody to leave a job and come to work for you, and if they have a family to support, or if they, even if it's just them to support, um, 
it's going to be really hard to ask somebody to wait six months or even four months if you're saying like if i sold a kitchen renovation job and you can't start it till july and you're not going to finish it till the end of the summer you know that's a long time to ask somebody to wait um in my personal opinion this is just Catherine's opinion is that if you do it on a draw where you say, okay, we're going to go ahead and pay you a thousand dollars a month, but, um, or 5,000 or whatever it would have to be for your industry. I have no idea. Um, but when you start bringing in revenue, we're going to take that back out. That's, that's pretty harsh in the first 12 months. Um, I would just say have a lower number, pay them a little bit for the first year. And then the second year they go straight commission, but, but they need to feel like you have skin in their game too. Like that you have faith in them and that you are invested in them and that you are supportive of them. Um, again, there, there's a lot of different um, opinions about that. That's really just how I feel. So don't pay them enough that they're sl that they are slack and don't sell anything, but pay them a little bit to make sure that they know that you support them and that you believe in them and you think they're going to succeed. Whatever that would be for your industry. Sure. No, that's that's right. that, that, that helps a lot. Uh, so thank you for that. Yeah, no, that, that's good. It's good advice. I mean, I've seen it. Um, obviously that's what we've done. Your yeah, I mean, that's, but, but we have come to that through other channels. That's how, you know, over the course of the last eight years, we've kind of decided that that's really what works best for us. Yeah, I know uh, Anson over at the roofing company, they, those, their salespeople are straight commission, but they don't start that way. They're, 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 they're guaranteed a certain amount for, I think, probably six months, maybe a year. The new guys definitely have got a year because he came over in a merger. And so that was part of the merger deal that they had to pay him for a year, um, a salary. And so, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I can see a lot of advantages to, to, to paying them a salary for a year while you got them trained and got them up to speed and then put them on some sort of commission. So. Mm -hmm after that in other and words they still, have, they still have sales goals they have to meet they still have and you know if they knock it out of the park then they get they get a portion of that and you know um you know make it worth their while to sell everything under the sun you know don't limit them to whatever you're going to pay them for that first year but you know there's going to be training involved they've got to learn the way you do things i'm sure i feel like they would have to learn how to do a bid I mean, I don't know, but um, so there's going to be a learning curve where they really don't have a lot of potential to bring anything in. Right. Yeah. I, I've had, I've actually had clients that when they worked okay, where they weren't, people weren't allowed to go in commission until they had hit a couple of, in other words, so it was a reward to get to go on commission because you were going to make so much more until they had achieved certain things, you know, had certain goals. It's an interesting, yeah, it's another way to look at it. So it's good. Okay. No, that's so, helpful. Yeah, yeah, good. Cool. And I'm well, happy to say if you have other questions, I mean, again, it's a different industry, but reach out to me. I'm happy to like give you my opinion for you can count it for what you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think, uh, I mean, I think that's why we have these calls it's because there's so much value in, in the, in the room. So it's, uh, Fairly, I know Bob said he was going to try to get on, but I think he's fighting a kidney stone. That's what he said, which is awful. Um, awful. Yeah. Well, one of my one of my friends said they had a knee replacement, not a knee replacement, a knee injury playing sports, and a kidney stone, and the kidney stone was much worse, was than, worse. than the knee injury, which is which is massively painful by itself. So I'm, I'm thinking he's in some pain. Um, cool. All right. Well, good. Well, so what, so the last thing is what's your top takeaway or what kind of value have you gotten out of today? So we'll start with, uh, I think we'll do Jay. Jay, what do you, what, what's your takeaway or value? 
No, it's, uh, of course, always refreshing, I guess, to, it sounds crappy, but to see other people not having the same problems I am. <laughs> <laughs> sounds bad, but uh, uh, I don't mean it. No, it's uh, just knowing <laughs> we're doing it together. Uh, so that's good. And also what we just talked about with how to structure a commission-based deal, uh, just because I'm literally treading in unknown waters when it comes to that stuff. So, you know, I do appreciate that, and those are definitely beneficial to me for sure. Cool. How about you, Brian? It's funny because before Jay said that, I thought the same thing is like, you know, I think it's, you know, sometimes it's, it, I want to have all the answers and I don't always have the answers. I think it's, it's good to see that other people don't have the answers either. So um, I appreciate everyone's input on the mailing stuff. So we're going to get that kind of in the queue uh, here shortly. So I, uh, yeah, I think, it, you know, the biggest takeaway for me is just kind of sharing ideas and seeing familiar faces. So thank you all. All right. How about you, Catherine? Um, yeah, I would ditto that. It's, it is, misery loves company, not that this is misery, but, you know, it's nice to, like, not feel like you're alone on an island trying to figure out how to get off. Um, uh, that's funny. But, yeah, so, so thank you. And, it's, and it is always nice to have, I deal with so many people in the insurance industry, it is nice to have people that I can ask questions of that are not insurance people. Um, because it does bring a completely different perspective to the table, which is really nice. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And that actually buy insurance. So, yeah. Yes. I mean, that actually yeah. you have had experience with it and, and our industry has such a crappy name. I hope that y'all have had great experience with it, but um, yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's an interesting one. I guess my biggest learning is that we got to, I got to figure out a, way to get more people on the call. I mean, there's too much value coming out of these things every, every week, just keeping people going and keeping people pumped up. So, uh, yeah, we gotta get more, we gotta get, we gotta get the rest of the crowd on the calls. I'm, I'm unclear what the problem is, but maybe it could be, it could be timing or they haven't made it clear, but yeah, we'll be back here ne next week at 11, same time, same channel, same everything. So, uh, yeah, if you need me, just reach out. Otherwise, thanks for being on the call. It's been it's been really good, I think. So thanks, thanks guys. Um, Bill, I have a quick question for you. Can okay, you I'll hang on. Yeah, I'll just hang on. Thank you. Thanks. thanks. Yep. Bye, guys. Yep. Bye. So I got a nice text message. I had reached out to Ronnie. He's the guy that owns the restaurant. Yep. Um two days ago, and I just I